Hey everybody, welcome to episode 76 of the Ask That Show, where we answer your Volkswagen questions. On this episode, we talk about warranty oil pans, parasitic draws, and ignition coil service intervals. Chris via shopdap.com says, our 2012 EOS has a parasite drain on the battery. Are there any common battery drains? All right, Chris, so uh, parasitic draw. Parasitic draw, if, if anybody's not familiar, parasitic draw is where basically you lock your vehicle and there's still a draw on the vehicle. Everything's turned off, the car is uh, locked and the alarm is armed, and there's still something draining the battery. Uh, what most commonly what would happen is, and keep in mind, this is assuming that you have a fresh battery and a good charging system, you would have had to have made sure that those are good. I'm making the assumption if he, if he is familiar with the phrase parasitic draw, he probably legitimately has one. Uh, parasitic draws, there's no real common parasitic draw that's ever existed that I that I can recall on Volkswagen Rowdies. Um, that would be something that would be, okay, here's what you would have. Parasitic draws by nature just tend to be really complicated problems. The way you would diagnose a parasitic draw would be um, to put a meter on your battery uh, in between the uh, battery cables, and then you would have to latch all the latches manually on the vehicle, including the hood latch, um, so that the vehicle could go to sleep. But what happen is once you arm your alarm on the vehicle, assuming all the latches are latches are latched, um, the uh, um, alarm arms, and then it, after some time it will time out, and the modules will start to go to sleep. Um, most commonly what would happen is when you have a parasitic draw, something specifically is not going to sleep uh, and causing that problem. So what you would do is arm the alarm, wait for everything to go to sleep, it obviously won't, you'll see an amp draw on the battery still, um, and then you would generally start pulling fuses um, until you locate what kills the amp draw, and then you would uh, try to diagnose from, from that fuse what's on that circuit and then backtrack into it. Diagnosing parasitic draws is extremely complicated um, and even a very seasoned technician is gonna get their behind kicked um, diagnosing something like that. It's not super fun. Um, most techs are not gonna be real thrilled about diagnosing something like that. So uh, <coughs> hopefully that helps you with your problem and gets you down the path of diagnosing it. Cat Hargrove via Facebook says, do I leave the screw in or take it out or put the spare on? All right, Kat, so uh, you have a screw in your tire. Uh, obviously, you can see from the picture there that there is a pretty good sized screw near the edge of this uh, tire. A uh, couple things. First, I would always put the spare on in this circumstance. The only time I might recommend is if it was a small screw that was all, like all the way into the tire, I would say maybe you're okay to drive if it's a really slow leak. Um, in this circumstance, that's a big bolt that you have in there and I would never ever continue to drive because it's gonna continue to drive into the tire, which if it was a small screw, I wouldn't be worried about, but on a big screw, I'd be afraid of it um, either puncturing all the way through and with a big screw like that, it's possible to happen or even worse, maybe throw it out um, and then have a uh, huge massive leak all at one time and potentially throw that bolt and cause some damage either to your car or another car on the road. So. Um, that would be, leaving it in is probably a bad idea. Taking it out, uh, in any circumstance, if you take a bolt out of your tire, it's very likely to release um, whatever air that was holding left in there, uh, because, you know, tires aren't super thick, they're thick, uh, but anything that's punctured it is gonna likely have an issue where if you pull it out, it's gonna lose all the air, and then you're gonna be forced to put a spare on there anyway. So. Um, my advice would be always put a spare on or call AAA, whichever you prefer. You know, if you don't want to change a spare, that's up to you. Or if you have a Mark 7 Golf R and don't have one, um, you know, a lot of the Mark 7 guys upgrade to the spare tire, which I'll link to here where you can check out the spare that Mark 7 people use to upgrade. But um, that would be the circumstance. And the one thing I wanted to note is this, uh, this I pulled from the Mark 7 Facebook group. And uh, specifically, a lot of people were saying to patch it. I can tell you from where that bolt is located, it's pretty likely that most people are not going to want to patch something like that. First of all, it's a big hole. Second of all, it's close to the sidewall. Um, and the general rule of thumb is any 
any type of puncture you get on the outer edge of tread, most people are probably not going to want to uh, patch or repair or plug uh, because it becomes a safety issue once you get out to the outer edges of the tire towards the sidewall. The likelihood of them not holding is higher. So uh, for safety concerns, most places would not want to uh, patch or repair or something like that. So hopefully that helps you with your issue. And unfortunately, it seems like you might need a tire. Marcus Richardson via Facebook says, lowered guys that bust their oil pans, did the dealer warranty it even though you lowered your car? Okay, Marcus, um, busting your oil pan under warranty. So there is literally no circumstance where breaking your oil pan would be covered under warranty. Um, breaking your oil pan is a result of damage that came from outside influence. Uh, you know, part of the reason why vehicles are factory ride height kind of have what mostly would be considered excessive wheel gap would be because there's some type of, I assume there's some parameters that they feel like they have to meet for ground clearance. And maybe there's a requirement somewhere that exists to, for, uh, vehicles are required to meet X ground clearance. I'm not really sure about that situation but i can tell you that there's no circumstance where you're going to have a warranty uh oil pan um unless it was defective uh with which there really wouldn't be a defective oil pan you hitting something or coming out of a, a bad angle of a road busting your oil pan on a driveway or something like that or hitting a big boulder in the road or something would not be uh an, a warranty issue it would be a uh, insurance issue. So if you're in that circumstance, you're going to generally have that cover under warranty. Um, I personally have, when I, uh, when I had moved into my neighborhood, they had, uh, raised manhole covers because it was a new neighborhood and the p roads weren't paved. You know, I busted my oil pan on that. Um, and, uh, you know, it, the issue was not going to be covered under anybody else. In that circumstance, you can kind of talk to either the city or the builder or someone else to try to get something like that covered. But um, you're not going to get actual uh, warranty to cover that because it's not a defect of the product. Keep in mind, whenever Volkswagen is going to warranty, the warranty is a guarantee that their product is not defective. Uh, same thing as if you hit it, hit uh, something in the road and, and damage the front of the vehicle, uh, it, same principles apply to that. Uh, as well as tires, if you blow out a tire um, on a massive pothole, the warranty, if there, if there one exists on a tire, is not going to uh, cover that because it's not a defect in the product. It's the fact you hit a massive pothole causing damage to the tire. So now some people have like road hazard coverage and that type of stuff. In that circumstance, you would have it, but road hazard coverage is not a default warranty uh, that factory vehicles have. A lot of times when you buy tires, like um, I know Volkswagen's dealer program, their dealer, that, or the, the tire dealer that Volkswagen dealers buy from, and keep in mind this isn't all of them, but the factory program from Volkswagen, uh, all those tires actually come with a road hazard warranty. So in that circumstance, you would have coverage on something like that if you did blow out a tire. So um, one other note I wanted to touch on is Somebody, uh, and this person happened to be from Europe, so it's a little bit different there. Um, somebody mentioned uh, VWR stuff being sold uh, by the dealer and covered under warranty. And in Europe, uh, Racing Line, now they're called Racing Line in the US, so in VWR, uh, Volkswagen Racing in the UK, uh, their products are sold at a lot of dealers over in Europe. I don't know if it's all dealers, um, but the same basic principles apply there because even though they're sold through dealers and their uh, factory approved motorsport stuff. They're, the fact that you lowered your car doesn't mean that because they're, you use their springs and you blew out your oil pan, you're gonna get it covered under warranty. Um, it's still modifying your vehicle. It's still a third party product. It's not Volkswagen's product. Um, and any warranty associated with that stuff should be associated and backed by that manufacturer instead of, um, instead of Volkswagen themselves. So, that warranty uh, would not be covered there either. And, and again, keep in mind, anytime you blow an oil pan, it's outside influence that caused it. Um, so even though you lowered your car with VWR springs, they're not gonna cover that either. So uh, I've never heard of that existing. Maybe, uh, maybe there's somebody who does something like that. I doubt it, 
um, and uh, you know, lowering your car is kind of an at your own risk thing and you have to be prepared for the risks you assume when you lower your car. Steve Williams via YouTube says, when will these 2.5 ignition coils go bad? Okay, so Steve's question was asked on a DIY we have on 2.5 ignition coils for, uh, uh, I think it was on a Mark V. Uh, I'll link to that video here, you can check it out. But basically the question is, is there a service interval for ignition coils? And this has pretty much been true forever. Um, there isn't a service, service interval on ignition coils. It is something they do tend to go bad. That was true, that's been true pretty much um, since Mark everything, Mark everything. Um, they have always had problems with ignition coils. More prevalent starting in 1.8Ts and Mark IV, and then Mark Vs, uh, 2.5s and 2 liter turbos had some ignition coil problems. Mark VII's are seeming to have some ignition coil problems as well. We just found out recently there's been a second or third revision of uh, the Mark VII ignition coils. I'll link to them for all the Mark VII guys. That's a lot of our community is Mark VII. So I'll link to the re latest revision of the Mark VII, which literally just dropped recently within, I think a week, a week or two, maybe, a few, maybe barely more. So, um, that has been a problem forever. There's no service interval because they're not really intended to go bad. Um, it is something that a lot of people who are Volkswagen Audi people are aware of and they replace as needed. Um, some people who are really vigilant keep spare coils in their car because they're not very expensive. They're, you know, 25 bucks roughly, uh, for most of the coils, sometimes a lot of times less. Um, so because of that, it is something that people tend to replace as a maintenance interval. Well, I would say if you really are hyper vigilant and you want to make sure you never have a coil go bad, I don't know, replace them every time you change plugs every 40 or 60,000 miles, um, depending on the interval, that might be a decent rule of thumb. It really depends. If you're just trying to spend minimum, the minimum to maintain your vehicle properly, I would say replace them as needed. Um, that would be my general advice. If you want to be vigilant, replace them all, maybe 40 or 60,000 miles. So hopefully that helps and answers your question. Thank you so much for watching episode 76 of the Ask Dap Show, where we answer your Volkswagen Audi questions. If you have any questions or comments about the questions answered in this show, be sure to leave in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more.